being able uh, to pick up a full two points through this game. So a uh, very intrigued, of course, to see how this one plays out. With that said, let's move over to the lineups here for this game. Although, uh, we know, we might have uh, an interesting change here uh, that uh, has been covered as far as uh, I am aware when it comes to these lineups, we thought initially uh, that Jerdubs for Canadians Esports would be on the defensive side, uh, but he is moving up. Uh, not to mention there is a substitute here. Their original winger in Dubs is now out of this lineup, and it is, I believe, Painist who is moving to the defensive side of things with Dubs moving up. So some very interesting late lineup changes here for the Canadian squad, and we'll try to, again, uh, get you as much updated information as we can here for this matchup. CBJ side of things with, uh, of course, the, the one and only Nasher fan 101, also known, of course, as Top Shelf Cookie, one of the best individual players in the game. We have Drama and Nasher up top as well. Jan and Junior Pens on defense and Welsh between the pipes. That CBJ gaming lineup, yet again, you have to say, Another you know, very talented squad that's perhaps a little bit further down in the standings than you'd perhaps expect. Yeah, I mean, the, the talent that's there, they could be moving up. But as we've talked about going into the previous game as well, that shows you the depth of this tournament, the amount of high quality teams, high quality players that there are that are playing in this event. Because when you've got a team that has, you know, uh, that has Nasher Fan 101, Nasher on the other side as well, uh, to have both of them in the lineup to have a team like that to be an eighth and a point up on ninth place. There are a lot of teams that are legitimately in contention. And uh, by the way, going back to that standings point really quick, Detroit, the only team that could realistically catch them, I believe is the Canadians esports team. So uh, they are really hoping that uh, CBJ gaming can come away with a regulation win so they can at least, you know, stop sweating as profusely as they probably are watching this game. I mean, a huge opportunity here for the Canadian side of things to, you know, really prove that they belong. Uh, we'll see how this one plays out. Of course, we'll get to the individual lineup breakdowns in just a moment here. Of course, we want to thank you for joining us on this broadcast, of course, uh, for the NHL Cup. Of course, as you see on screen there, NANHL20Cup.com, NorthernArena.ca, NHLGamer.com. And of course, we want to thank uh, some of our other sponsors, Xbox Canada, Jinx Canada, the Goalie Guild, Gamers Votes. We want to thank all of them for helping uh, make this tournament come together. Again, a free-to-play tournament started with about 90 teams, get down to 32, and we are just about there. The final 16, the playoffs, just about ready to begin. Again, every team playing a 15-game regular season and a crucial game here again the battle between eighth and ninth cbj and canadians as you get a look at the season stats thus far and drew what stands out for me here with the cbj lineup it has to be the lack of offensive production now it doesn't always translate but you do have some top-notch players on that squad top shelf cookie of course a gwc champion junior pens as well kind of continues that trend of some of these uh, top-notch single players uh, playing defense in sixes. Uh, he, another guy like Odie, really happens to stand out. But just 18 goals so far through 11 games this season. It's honestly shocking to me. This is... If basically all of these games were... And teams were putting up numbers like CBJ Gaming is that's kind of what drove all of the rule changes after the 0405 NHL lockout because everybody said these two one games that they've got to stop and that's basically what CBJ Gaming has been producing at the very least for them what has kept them going only scoring 18 goals they're scoring barely a goal and a half per game that they've played they're only giving up 15 they're giving up a little less than a goal and a half a game which is unbelievable if they had the goals scored that the Canadians esports team had. Uh, to this point in the series, they'd probably be 11-0 with, with the way that they've been preventing goals from being scored. It, it's it's remarkable uh, that a team uh, can can pull something off like that. But, I mean, 6-2-3, and three, uh, <laughs> it's worked to this point. And that kind of proves that if they can get their offense going, how dangerous could this team be if that offense starts clicking and their defense continues to play the way it has? I mean, you mentioned the 0405 lockout. I mean, we might as well. We've given a shout out to Patrick Law on this broadcast. We might as well give a shout out uh, to Martin Brodora and the New Jersey <laughs> Devils for, uh, you know, 
kind of you know, building the strategy that we see the real life Islanders using now of just let's make this as boring as possible, take advantage <laughs> of our opportunities and win. So, hey, intrigued to see what happens there. Uh, this I'm still, still upset about that the trapezoid, though. I, I still do not <laughs> like the trapezoid rule that was invented just from our Tambor door. And I think they did it backwards. That's been always been my thing is. Why would you want? Why would you want the goalie to be able to play it immediately behind the net? Only let the goalie play it twenty feet from his cage. That I'd reverse it if you're going to keep it. That's, but that's just me. If you're trying to create goals, I'd want to keep the goalie as far out of the crease as possible, and maybe get them caught twenty feet away from their net. I think the thing that we've learned is that Drew and I could sit here and rant and ramble about <laughs> hockey all day long. That podcast may be coming soon. Uh, to a platform near you. Let's get to the individual breakdowns here. We are going to start off with the center matchup for CBJ Gaming. We have Drama and for Canadians Esports, we have Crohn's. And going to be very intrigued to see how this one plays out. We will update you as well on the lineup change for Canadians uh, Esports because we have another slight little change here. Uh, but again, we'll update you on that in just a matter of moments. Now, Drew, we've talked about it with these center battles comes down to who can put up points, but also who can shut down things defensively. And when it comes to putting up points, uh, Groans has been on point to say the least. A phenomenal 25 points in 11 games. Oh, absolutely incredible. When you're talking about that, I mean, 19 assists. That is really just showing you how much offense he is creating and generating. And from a centerman, that's kind of uh, the way that I would look first. I, you know, you usually read it goals, assists, points. For me, with an esports centerman, I'm looking at assists first. That is kind of the primary thing because... Uh, goals are all kind of gravy with that sort of thing. It's the amount of offense you can generate as a center, and uh, Crohn's has been fantastic with that. On the other side, Drama, a, a hair below 49% in the faceoff circle. So uh, we saw two centers in the last game that were each below 50%, and we saw the way that battle went in game one between Anaheim and LA. So it'll be interesting to see what he can contribute in this game and try to get things going maybe in that way. Uh, you know, he's got a game winning goal out of his six. One of those did win a game, but Crohn's again. Two out of his six came away with the game winner. So uh, the center matchup seems to favor the Canadians esports team, but we'll see what drama can do if he might step it up, taking on a centerman like Crohn's. Another thing to point out, of course, is always that face-off battle. Drama just under, just a hair under 50% in terms of a win percentage. Again, much like we saw in the first game of this broadcast, face-offs crucial, of course, to any team's success. We'll see how that battle plays out. Moving over to the winger matchup for CBJ Gaming. Uh, Nasher Fan 101, of course, also known as Top Shelf Cookie, one of the best in the game alongside Nasher. I don't know if there's a real height difference of that, but it'd be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and for Canadians Esports, again, we do have a slight change here. We've seen a swap uh, between Jerdubs and Dubs. I'm sure that won't cause any confusion uh, between the winger and defensive battles. So Jerdubs up top, and uh, I don't know if that was just initially... Uh, a marking error from them in terms of their lineup or not, but uh, certainly a good idea to have Dubs up top, one of the top point-producing players at this stage. And, of course, you see uh, what Cookie and Nasher are capable of doing, but the key here uh, has to be Slargy. I mean, not a single game played up to this point. He is in as a substitute at this stage. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, Painist or Mivians who is uh, taking a seat, but ultimately, huge opportunity for him here to make an impact late on in the season. Yeah, a, a wild card in this game because it's, you know, if you're if CBJ has been watching the tournament to try and prepare for this one, you haven't seen the tape on him necessarily. I mean, we know that he's played obviously uh, before this tournament, but it'll be interesting to see what he can bring to the table. And yeah, by the way, just looking at that with Nasher Fan 101 and Nasher, uh, it, it's like that picture of Rocco Grimaldi and Zidane Chara that was taken uh, early the season before the shutdown. Uh, Rocco Grimaldi, who I covered with the Florida Panthers, now at the Nashville Predators, five foot six, uh, and actually once told me he wished he was five foot five, so he would have been the shortest player in the NHL at the time. But uh, Zidane Chara, who's you know twelve foot three, uh, basically kind of looks like the esports equivalent here as line mates on the wing. I'm curious to see if their their uh, their players have the same kind of discrepancy. If maybe we got one that looks like Bartan St. Louis and one that you know a bit more of a big punishing forward. Now, I, I appreciate the Rocco Grimaldi <laughs> shout-out, a former Portland Pirate. Rest in peace to my my team. But ultimately, as we look to move on here, this matchup just about ready to get underway, so we're going to rapid-fire the rest of this lineup here to you and the keys of the game as well. So we move over to that defensive battle, CBJ Gaming rolling with Jan and Junior Pens and Canadians Esports with Dubs 
and Fool. And again, the, the X factor here, I think I'll point it out just on behalf of both of us. It's Fool and his ability to put up points. But again, uh, Payne is being in the lineup that is uh, Dubs, who has actually uh, dropped back. So we'll see how that ultimately uh, plays out in terms of the defensive battle. The goaltending matchup next, another uh, interesting uh, option here as well. Uh, the game, the, the pictures for these two, two of my favorites I've ever seen. Uh, but right now, between Just Dump It for Canadians Gaming and Welsh for CBJ Gaming, uh, Drew, I'm not sure if that leads into one of your key points of the game here for CBJ, but a phenomenal save percentage for Welsh. Uh, simply unbelievable that we see CBJ in eighth place in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, that is definitely one of my keys, and I would have phrased it differently if I realized he basically looked like Matt Pat's cousin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, but uh, hey, that's just a theory, an eSports theory. But uh, anyway, I don't know if I owe him copyright royalties for that. But yeah, I think I, you do. It's like saying it's happy awesome. birthday. You're not allowed to do it. <laughs> Hey, no, that's public domain now. You can. We could right now. We wouldn't cost uh, the NHL Cup uh, anything to Fantastic. do that. But yeah, uh, goaltending, absolutely one of the keys if we wanted to jump into that really quick. Uh, you got to stop doubting CBJ in everything. Uh, they're currently in eighth. A number of upset wins, just like their parent club, the Columbus Blue Jackets. We've seen that them in the playoffs in consecutive years, pulling off wins. Uh, going into the season, we knew what they were Everybody was predicting doom and gloom for them without Bobrovsky, without Panarin, and in the playoffs and uh, advanced past their first uh, matchup, too. Uh, and uh, there's just a lot with this. But, yeah, the goaltender, of course. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Welsh, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. That's uh, Anytime I can reference Anchorman, always happy to do it on that. So uh, number one or two in save percentage, goals against average, and shutouts in the tournament. Dude has been fantastic and is the reason that while that offense in front of him has struggled a little bit, how CBJ Gaming has been able to pull off the wins that they have. Uh, they also have the tournament leader in hits on their side. Uh, Junior Penn's the senior punisher for this CBJ Gaming team on that side. Uh, and yeah, the, the just uh, just dump it uh, promo. Pick, I mean, that's blue steel, uh, obviously, even if it's a red background. Uh, I guess that would be blue steel or uh, I, I my pronunciation in French of bleu uh, with the EU instead of the UE, uh, I guess that would be bleu. I don't know how to say steel in French, so I apologize. Uh, but yes, that uh, look from Zoolander. So a fantastic look as well. There was so much there that I want to <laughs> try to respond to seven different things, and we just simply don't have time. I wish I could say I found a way, like uh, the Drake and Josh comparison that we've seen in chat. That said, uh, moving things over to the Canadians' keys to the game. And again, Drew, your pun game, uh, certainly on point for this. Stay at Rouge hot for the Habs here. They've won four straight games, all by multiple goals. We'll see if they can keep up that level of offense. Sixth best in the 16 team eastern conference and we've already talked about them a bit here your goals leads to your dubs this your dubs leads the habs in goals with 17 he's near the top in this tournament and nobody plays the fool at least this time although that that's yet to be determined full two goals 12 points nears uh, the top of the rankings amongst defensemen we already kind of mentioned him there when we saw the point totals going to be a crucial player for them if the Habs are able to get the points here, we'll see how this one goes. Ultimately, you know, we talked about it. We saw it in that first matchup. Defense to offense is a huge thing, but you also uh, certainly need your defenseman to be able to clamp down at a given time. And, you know, we kind of saw that through the first game between the Ducks and the Slaughterhouse, which is a very interesting comparison outside of the realm of this stream. But, you know, you see how this goes you need that ability to lock things down. So it's not all about the offense and these defensemen that maybe, you know, maybe don't put up the most amount of points in the world. They can still be a more than a uh, more than a help to their team's overall success. So again, a very interesting matchup here. The battle between eight and nine. Each of these teams just with four games left in the regular season. A win here for CBJ really puts the pressure on the Habs to deliver through the back half of this season. Yeah, CBJ a win here would not quite wrap up a playoff spot, but uh, just about because they would be closing in on Detroit. And if they can overtake them, they are in the playoffs for the situation. And yeah, the Canadians uh, could really, really make Detroit sweat, even if they just pick up one point here to try to creep up in those standings, try and overtake them, the team that has already wrapped up their tournament 
pre the regular season uh, tournament matchups thus far. So uh, interesting to see what happens here with CBJ and Canadians. Uh, I'm curious to see what type of game we get here because when we're looking at those team numbers, CBJ Gaming has played a very low scoring kind of game and Canadians, I mean, averaging three times as many goals almost or twice as many goals uh, per game as CBJ. How will those styles mesh? Will we end up seeing CBJ have to step up and try to move that offense? Or will we see Canadians have to try and make the most out of limited opportunities if CBJ can shut them down? It's going to be interesting to see which style kind of wins out in that battle because obviously if you're CBJ and you give up a number of chances and a number of goals, you can't afford to play that. We're going to try to score twice and win that way kind of style. I mean, looking at the stats here, too, I mean, you talked about it with CBJ Game. Perhaps we'll get another look at the team stats here. Puck drop roughly a minute away or so at this point. Our second game of three in this broadcast. But again, CBJ uh, tied for the top defensive numbers thus far. But a thing, uh, you know, a stat that really stands out to me right now. Only nine power play opportunities for CBJ at this point in the season and we've seen some lower power play opportunity numbers as well for these teams uh you know all in all discipline's been a major factor here and i gotta be honest i'm, I'm a little bit surprised there with cbg i mean they've taken the fifth most penalties in the conference despite being the number one team in hits it's not just junior pens that leads the way in terms of physicality every single member of this lineup uh, can play the body and do so successfully but very intriguing to see how the discipline plays out at this stage and whether or not really that could be the difference maker in this game here because ultimately when you have two relatively evenly matched teams something's gotta give between these two lineups as you get a look at the updated canadians lineup there again jurdubs and xdubs swapping uh, positions you have jurdubs back on the wing a uh you know i'm not gonna say a bold move a very wise move when you're talking about someone of his offensive talents yeah, and best of luck to you, considering they're both on the left side as well with having to pull Jerdubs and X-Dubs and try to differentiate between them as we uh, get started here. I always love the little uh, pre-game animations that people choose. I haven't seen my favorite one yet today, which is the pull-ups on the hockey stick that floats without a support bar. Absolutely, that one's up there for me as well. Uh, I will say, though, at the very least, they are not wearing, it's not in the game, but at the very least, Canadians Gaming not wearing the barber pole <laughs> that they had for Reebok back in the day. So I do thank them for that. Canadians in on the attack early and a shot just wide. Glove side on Welsh. Drew, we nearly saw another near instantaneous goal after puck drop. Would have been a huge moment there uh, for the Canadian squad as they're able to take this one away. Loose puck, kicked out, rebound, fighting for it, and he scores! It's the opportunistic, the one and only Nash are able to bury that one. And we talked about it, nearly getting a quick goal for the Canadians, but instead it's CBJ going down the other way. And they have the one to nothing lead. This is a repeat of game one. It just took an extra minute. That's literally what happened the first time was a quick rush. Looked like a really good scoring chance. All of a sudden a break the other way and a goal in the other direction. And that was what happened in the first game we called. And it's happened yet again and CBJ trying to go relentlessly right back at it. And now we have a chance the other way for Montreal or for the Canadians eSports. So uh, interesting to see so many offensive chances so quick. What a huge kick save there by Welsh following the spin move from Jurdubs. Great opportunity there in response. Couple of chances here for the Canadians eSports team. Just not able to find the back of the net as of yet. But we talk about it with CBJ we, you know, being one of the better defensive teams. Uh, very interesting, of course, that we've seen them give up some of these opportunities so early on in this game but a huge chance here now for cbj gaming off of this face off see if drama is able to win it and he does quick passing and a score nasher strikes again on the one timer and that quickly a face off set play pays off double or nothing now for cbj gaming they're up by two like rick nash in his prime we're in the 61 on the wing right there just beautiful play and uh, I think that we figured out this looks like it. We're going to be playing that a high scoring type of thing. Really quick answer that we got there on whether this would be a one nothing two to one kind of game or maybe a bit more high scoring. Uh, and Nasher, two goals in a matter of less than five minutes. What a start for CBJ Gaming. These two teams, really all four teams so far tonight, bringing the entertainment value to us. It can often be difficult at times calling a defensive matchup, Drew. I'm sure, as you know, with just two teams 
just not really wanting to give an inch. But when you have more offensive games like this and anything can happen, the drop of a hat certainly keeps everyone on their toes, not just the players, but us here in the booth as well. So see again if the Canadians can really get something going here. They've had a couple of opportunities, but they've been more delayed quick penalty. strike approaches as there is a delayed penalty. As you mentioned, puck touched up and the Habs going to the power play here. He he scores goals, but he does Nasher's take the penalty. Doing everything. It's Nasher to the box. First period, Gordy Howe hat trick is I think what he's looking for here. Chance here again. We'll see if the Canadians esports team can get established. Drama having trouble holding on to that one. Jerdubs finds his man at the point. Pass across. Nobody home on that one. And we have another delayed call. It's going to be a charging call here. Not sure on who that is going to be. Drama. So the center goes to the box. Five on three power play coming here for the Habs. And I guess if you're looking for a bright spot, I mean, it's awful to lose your center, but at least you have both your defensemen on the ice if you're CBJ. Absolutely. Chance here now back at the point. Dubs, good passing work and a good blocker save there by Welsh in response. Hard four check here. The Habs back. Great play and an even better save by Welsh. Phenomenal job as the puck trickles all the way back to the Canadians defensive zone off an errant pass. We already see Welsh you know, living up to that save percentage. You want to know if he's the real deal? He absolutely is. Chance here. Shot and a glove save. And he'll freeze that one. So under siege here, but Welsh able to stand tall so far through this five on three. That escalated quickly. <laughs> I mean, that really got out of hand fast. But yeah, uh, I mean, if his if his character is uh, two inches shorter, I think that's a goal. I don't think he gets that full leg extension and makes that save because that was that wasn't a toe save. That was a uh, the, the blade on the skate save early on in that power play chance on that five on three. And already CBJ has killed off the first and about to kill off the second. Strong effort there on the kill, led by a face-off win by Cookie. Again, not the natural center. Loose puck on net. Welsh able to recover that one. He'll freeze it. And the Jackets now back to five on five. So a very interesting opening nine and a half minutes or so to this game. An opportunity goes to waste there for the Canadians esports team. We'll see what they can do here. Getting the better of the draws. They win that one. Loose puck. Still an opportunity. Fired across. Sure Dub's able to recover back down in the corner. Loose puck again, kicked behind the net, still there. Jurdubs nearly walks it home, still fighting for it. Has it, in the Gretzky, has it in Gretzky's office, still fighting for it. What a forecheck here for the Habs. The action coming at you faster than I can possibly call. Deflection bid, but a great block there by Drama. Now it's top shelf cookie leading it down the other way. Nasher takes a hit at the blue line. Here come the Canadians once more. Loose puck recovered, bit of space, tests him short side, and he scores. And that is exactly what the Canadians needed. It was a matter of who was going to blink first there, Drew, and Welsh makes the move. Great shot, and we're back to within a one-goal uh, one goal differential here. It's Crohn's able to bury that one. Yeah, that was just a great move, and uh, I basically he had a pass opportunity, he had a shot opportunity, and the goaltender basically leaned one way, and he read it and just capitalized and found some space between the netminder and the post to put it home to cut this lead in half. Great opportunity there, taken advantage of. Can't give someone of that offensive skill level, that type of opportunity. We'll see now how CBJ is able to respond. Aaron pass there from Cookie. Huge hit on the step up by Junior Pens, but I do believe that's going to lead to a call. It's going to be interference. I think he made contact with a secondary player, if I'm not mistaken. So third penalty of this first period already for CBJ Gaming. Drew, we talked about it. The discipline potentially being a factor. So far, so good in terms of the kill efforts, but... It was certainly playing with fire, taking this many penalties. Yeah, I mean, they've already killed off two, including a 90-second five-on-three. But, oh boy, you really cannot be afford to be on pace to take nine penalties in this game against a team like Montreal. Sure, Dubs has it down low. The feed in front, trying to find Slarchy, just not able to hit him. Again, pass in front, picked off by Cookie, and able to clear it off the defender. Quickly back in the zone, a dump and attempt doesn't quite work out. They look for the spring pass. And it's taken away. Great step up there by Just Dump It to rob Top Shelf Cookie of a tremendous opportunity. Ten seconds left here on the man advantage. And back down low. A pass in front. Not there. The Canadians forcing a lot of passes here through the slot. CBJ Gaming doing a pretty good job of shutting it down. This one goes down for racing. So another big face-off opportunity here for the Canadians esports team. Bit of a, a wasted potential here so far for, through the first for Canadians Gaming because they had that chance. Three power plays, cannot get a goal. They did cut the lead in half, but here's a chance off of that face-off shortly after 
this most recent power play. Sure, Dub is just not able to fire that one away. An offside call here on CBJ. And really, Drew, what I've seen so far is rightfully so cbj gaming trying their best to shut down jer dubs and deny him these shooting opportunities yeah i mean and that's one of the things because we talked about it as one of the keys to the game is uh, jared dubs just he leads the canadians gaming in goals so far in this tournament and if you could shut him down that is a huge part of the offense he's got uh, just shy of half of the goals for his team so uh if you can keep him off the scoreboard you're doing a really good job defensively Crone's not able to fire that one home. 20 seconds left. The chance for one more rush here. Here comes CBJ. Drama looking to lead it through. Draws the trip. 4.9 to go in the first period. CBJ going to the power play. Uh, not sure who that was taking the penalty there. I think it was full on defense for the Canadians. Big chance on the draw. The tie up set play and a great block by Dubs to take away that chance. Learn, adapt, and put that information to use. Dubs does a great job there getting in front of Nash or denying him a near identical goal. Uh, but Drew, a very interesting stat line there. I'll let you break that one down. Yeah, uh, when you're looking at shots and you see it was 5-2 in that period and you see it's a 2-0 score, you might uh, just assume the team with two goals had all five of those shots, but uh, exactly the opposite. Montreal, the Canadians esports team with five shots on goal, could not beat Welsh in the... or he beat Welsh once, uh, one out of five, but... CBJ making the most of their opportunities, scoring two goals on two shots that actually reached the net and were on goal. So uh, no no saves to this point for Just Dump It, even if he has stopped a few chances. His defense in front of him has stopped a few chances, but uh, CBJ has done a great job of capitalizing whatever chances they've had. Jackets here on their first power play of the game. Bit of space here. Cookie not able to get that puck. He does win it back, though, using a much smaller build, looking for that agility. But it's quickly taken away. We'll see what the Canadians can do here. Short-handed. Jerdubs nearly walking it through the defense. Power play half over at this stage. Chance here. Drama tries to feed. Nasher still tries to shovel that one in. I believe that will be just dump its first save of the game. 42 seconds to go on the man advantage. And again, we've seen how dangerous CBJ can be with these set plays off the dot. See what happens here with drama against Crohn's tie-up play. The Habs come away with it. Can't dump it, though. Cookie tries to feed it in front. Taken away, though. Dubs able to send that one down. Off the pad of Welsh. Nearly caught him off guard. Easily could have gone off the skate and in. But they avoid disaster. We're back to even strength. Loose puck in front. Still fighting for it in the slot. And just dump it's going to come up with it. He'll cover that one. We're back to five on five. So uh, just realized that I have a small spot on my screen. And if you're curious how I discovered that I have that on my computer monitor here, it's because on that dump in, all of a sudden that slight shadow rolled into the back of the net. And I thought it was a goal because it looked like the shadow outline of the puck. I've now wiped it clean. Uh, apparently it was just a, just a little schmutz on the monitor there instead. So uh, it remains 2-1. Schmutz in the goal doesn't count. Honestly, I wish you had reacted to it. It would have been great to hear, but not as great of a save as that. What a reaction time from Jess Dumpin to deny drama the opportunity all alone in front. So talk about no saves there for Jess Dumpin through the first period. He's stepping up already here through the first four minutes of the second. Another tie-up here for CBJ. Shot on, doesn't find its way to the net. Cookie not afraid to take those shots if he's given the opportunity. Here come the Canadians. A self-pass off the boards doesn't work. Quickly again, now recovered by the Habs. Chance there for Slarchy. Again, his first game of the season. Game 12 of 15. What a time to make a debut. Huge hit there. Will there be another call? The answer is no. So Junior Penn's making his presence felt. The leader and hits the right defenseman. Yellow icon. For CBJ, of course, in the dark blue. He fires one on. Loose puck was there. And it's in. Top shelf cookie able to tip that one home through all the traffic. And CBJ Gaming restore their two-goal lead. They've scored pretty goals, and now they just get one that is just poke away at it, knock away at it, see what you can do, get in front of the net, and get into those dirty areas and just win the puck, throw those hits. And that all started it. It started on that huge hit. Uh, to really spark that play. And now 3-1. to one. Uh, By the end of this game, CBJ may have like scored 50% more goals tonight than they had entering the game. 
Certainly getting those offensive totals closer to where they would want it. A shot doesn't find its way through. Cookie able to drop that one back, perhaps not his intended target. Junior Pens will be able to recover, and he'll look to lead the charge. Finds Nasher on the stretch pass, makes the move between the legs, cut for Cookie, pass, and just wide! What a, what a, a display of vision there on that extra pass to find Drama, just not able to hit the target. Can't believe we didn't see a shot sooner than that. Always looking for the highlight reel goal, RCBJ Gaming, and it nearly paid off there again we're talking about it the Habs uh, the Canadians esports playing with fire at times nearly got burned again there need to get the puck possession under control they have the offensive zone right now although you know a Bruins fan jinxing a, a Habs sponsored team I can't think of a more iconic duo than that as Junior Pens leads it into the zone toe drags past the defenseman loses it though in his skates Cookie now able to recover along the half wall again he loses it for just a moment so we don't have different ice physics and uh, puck physics within NHL 20 but I certainly think you could say the puck seems to be bouncing a lot more than normal these two teams really struggling to get extended uh, possession time here at this stage to really see the neutral zone battle taking over a bit more Slarchy tries to find your dubs in front taken away by Jan he'll bide his time and drop it back drew four and a half to go what do you say three more goals this period yeah, you know, I could see this being a, you know, make a, a score a touchdown on one side here, try to, you know, no, nearly poked in right there on that opportunity to make it four to one. I mean, if Montreal, if, if Canadians Esports gives up another goal in this period, that's really going to be kind of the stinger, I think, on this one. I'd say dagger, but puns. So I, I really do think I'm kind of be the. I'm so glad that was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's, uh, I, I'm trying, I'm not trying to bug you, by the way, with these puns, but. Uh, to just further that one even further. Uh, yeah, but uh, no, I mean, CBJ, just that close. Check out that rebound, too. Just squirted right through the legs and hit the post. I mean, a couple of inches, and we're talking about a 4-1 lead for CBJ. 3-1 to one. seems like it might be really difficult for Canadians Esports to overcome in the third period. 4-1, to one, uh, and it might just be too devastating at this point. So what's the fastest route out of the booth and away from you? Cannon or taxi? <laughs> I don't know if I could deal with too many more of these puns. I don't know how Nick does it. Chance here for CBJ. Drama gets it down to Nasher. Tries to shovel it in. Loose puck again around the net. CBJ doing a fantastic job here through the first near two-thirds of this game in terms of getting the puck in front of the net. But they take another penalty here. And, Drew, this has to be a goal, I would say, here for the Canadians. You need to take advantage of one of these opportunities. Yawn the left defenseman to the box. They're over for the night thus far. You've got to score. You've got the final minute 52 to Set do it. And just play, like that. Ask and you shall receive. You called him out at the beginning of the you know at the beginning of the game, the beginning of the night. It's Jerdubs who strikes. And we have again a one goal game. Drew, I think they were listening. <laughs> yeah, I mean no one more than the players wanted to not go 0 for 4, 0 for 5 on a power play in this kind of a game, especially down 3-1. to one. They scored a little bit of time left here in the second period, and there's a huge difference between being down by two after two and being down by just one with 20 minutes left. A yeah, near uh, offside call there. I want to say near offside call. Nearly walked it perfectly in time, but an offside call there on the Canadians. 30 seconds to go now down to 29.9. You see the drastic difference there in physical play. See if one of these two teams can get a late hit here. Crohn's in front, and he scores at Schlarky. His debut on the season, and a debut goal. And the Canadians have tied this one up here at the end of the second period. What a turn of events. We talked about it, Drew. Maybe some more goals here. I guess, who knows, 6-6 six, six final, 7-6. Can we end in a tie? This is going to be something <laughs> heading into the third period. I mean, I wasn't going to point out that you're instinct was to say 6-6 six, six, that would have been a tie I mean maybe pre-2004 but these teams aren't playing one of those types of games 16 shots between the two teams six goals just absolutely incredible a uh, for way for Canadians esports to finally get on the board that power play goal must have just lifted so much off of their shoulders because of the fact that they couldn't capitalize on the 92nd five on three couldn't capitalize on another power play